this time that you've given us. Thank you so much for the gift of life, the gift of faith. I want to thank you for your existing provision. Thank you for your God and the Zoom and our God. God bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We welcome you. We are here again discussing the, the title of Get Side and Ketones. There's, um, there's a verse in um, uh, there's a verse in, in, in First Samuel chapter 22 uh, from verse 1 to 2 it says David departed uh, from there and escaped to the cave of Adlam and when his brothers and all his father's house had it they went down there to him and everyone who was in this place and everyone who was in bed and everyone who was in discontent who was discontented gathered to him <laughs> and he became captain over them and there were with him about 400 men <laughs> Did you hear the kind of people that gathered around David? So David is, is the leader of the following. Those in distress, those in debt, and those discontented. Those are the people that he was with. But who was David before he got here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the team. Uh, the team. Whoever is in debt, <laughs> distressed, discontented, became part of David. But before we go there, we need to find out this kind of David that they are gathering around. Because there's, there's, there's a previous David. Okay? David, at the age of 12 years, if not 11, he was anointed as the king of Israel. 12 years. 11. Between 10 and and 11 years, David is anointed king. So he's at the age of 11, he's king. Okay? okay. We see that in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Now, at the age of 12 years, he's brought to live. He leaves his family and he's taken to the palace. He started staying in the palace. At the age of 12 years. Because you remember very well your Bible. That is when he was taken to King Saul to play him the what? The jitter. So he started staying in the palace at the age of 12 years. It is at that age. Hey, hey, hey. You read, you read, uh, you read uh, uh, first, first Samuel chapter 16, verse 21. Now, at that very age, okay, it is in that very, when he's just 12, he kills the army commander of the enemy troops and defeats the entire enemy troop. He kills Goliath when he's 12 years. I, I, when he killed Goliath, he didn't go back home. He started staying in the palace. That, that is David for you. Huh? Mm -hmm. At <laughs> David, David. Now, 
As he grows, he makes friends with the crown prince, Jonathan. He is the best friend of the prince. As a young man. Now, now, in case you're asking, who do you know? David is the best pre is the best friend to the prince of the Paris. Mm -hmm. Now, while he stays in the palace, according to, to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, the king Saul gives David the highest rank. He has a rank. As if that is not enough, he becomes an in-law to the king. He marries the daughter of the king. <laughs> According to, to, to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, someone read that. 18, verse 14. <laughs> Brenda Chichi, you, you look, you look at the life of this man. In everything he did, yes. he had great success. Yes. Because the Lord was with him. Now, he. <laughs> this guy is not just in the palace, but even God is with him. You read verse 16. In the same that way. was verse 14. Mm. You read 16. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their company. The entire nation loved him. Now he's even a celebrity. But Saul had never heard that he was anointed king then. Because Saul has never heard why? Because Samuel anointed him king in the in the, in the, in the living room of his father Jesse. Mm. But but wait a minute. Did David take even the anointing serious? Did he even know what was happening? That age. I don't know. Of course he did. But look at the life of this guy. In fact, according to a certain verse somewhere there in uh, in twenty one. People started seeing him. He became an icon. Do you see that, David? Mm. Eh? Mm. That is the David in the gates. In the gates. He is in the gates. There is another David. There is another thing that I'd like to read. First Samuel chapter 21, verse 10 to 15. Someone read very quickly. Verse, 20, chapter 21? Yes, yes. Verse? 21, verse 10 to 15. And, and that day David fled from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. Mm. But the servants of Achish mm. said to him, mm. Isn't this David mm. the king mm. of the land? Mm. Isn't he mm. the one mm. they sing about mm. their dances? Mm. Saul has slain his thousands, oh. and David mm. his tens of thousands. Mm. David took these words yeah. to heart yeah. and was very much afraid of mm. Akish, mm -hmm. king of Gath. Yes. So yeah. he feigned insanity mm. in their presence. And while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, uh -huh. <laughs> making marks hey. in the doors of the gate hey. and letting saliva run down his beard. Uh -huh. Achish mm. said to his servants, mm. look at the man, mm. he is mm. insane. Mm -hmm. Why bring him to me? Mm. Am I so short? Mm. Of madmen, yes, that you have to bring this fellow uh -huh. here uh -huh. to carry on like this in front of me. Uh -huh. Must this man uh -huh. come into my house? Uh -huh. 
continue through through chapter 22 to verse 2 from David, verse 1 uh -huh. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Agila mm. when his brothers and his father's household heard about it yes they went down to him there mm -hmm. all those who were in distress uh -huh. or in debt mm -hmm. or discontent uh -huh. gathered round him mm -hmm. and he mm. became their commander Mm. Now, now, gentlemen, I would like to ask you, those who are here listening to me and those who are watching me, is this the David in the pants? This David is different. This David is different. First of all, he now, the former King David, he is a fugitive and wanted. One, two. He, is, he looks now like a madman. Three, he is no longer in the palace. He is in the cave. Now, do you know, do you know what stays in the cave? And reptiles. He is at that level. He was best friends with Jonathan, the Paris prince. Now he is friends with whoever is in bed, distressed and discontented. The the the. The new sociology is the debtors, the distressed, and those in debt. Now, the David who was in gates is now in the ghetto. Gates and ghetto. I promise you I will not take any of your time. Let me say these few words very quickly. And the Lord will bless us. Do you see how life can change in a flip of a second? <clears throat> the devil knows in the gates he's now in the ghetto now i would like to first of all pause there and remind those who are in the gates that it can only take 30 minutes to find yourself in the ghetto but I would like to remind those who are in the ghetto, okay, that it just takes one stone that one can swing towards the head of Goliath into the gates. And you are into the gates. A 12 year boy swings. A stone to the head of Goliath and he is in the gates. And the people in the gates, he does not have to introduce himself. He only says, I am the David that killed Goliath. I mean, the entire country knows who killed Goliath. And you are into the gates. Now, this is what I'm saying. You do not need. To work as hard or as less to get yourself into the gates. Neither do you need to do much to find yourself into the ghettos. That is life for you. Interesting. But I would like to say a few things about the gates. I don't know whether any of you do understand what it means to live in the gates? 
because this is what it means. It means to be born there. There are some people who are born there in the gates. They, they, they were born within opportunities. Being born in abundance, there, there, they are within providence. They, they, they get whatever they want whenever they want it. They are in the gates. They have servants. They are served. They do not serve. They are served. But they, they are within the gates. They are, they are, the, the gates have fortresses around them. They are, they are, they are under protection. When you're born in the gate, when you're in the gate, you're protected from the outside world. Even when you move out of the gates, you are under protection. You are in a car. And the glasses are raised up. And the AC is in. Then, then you, you don't get into contact with the outside world. You are in the gates, even when you are outside those gates, you are still in the gates. You are blessed. You are celebrated like David was. You are friends to the princes of the palace. You are in law to the kings. <laughs> you are in the gates. There are some people in this world who are in the gates. There are some people. I don't know whether we have some here. I just don't know. But I know there are people who are in the gates. Then there are those who are in the ghettos. The ghetto. By the way, do we know what the ghetto what what ghetto means? It was born in Italy, in Venice, where the Italians had put the Jewish and forced them to stay. The Venetian ghetto. And they were put there to live there. A ghetto means foundry. Foundry. I don't know whether I'm mentioning that English word right. F O U N D R Y. Foundry. That's what a ghetto means. But what does that word mean? What does foundry mean? It is not just to force you into something. Okay? It is to cast a lifestyle and a mindset. It, it is to embrace. I think of in our work, yes. we have a section where yes. we do foundry work. Where you do foundry? Yes. Thank you very much. We, we get scrap metals. Yes, we get scrap metals. Of cards. Uh -huh. Melt them in the furnace. You melt them in the furnace. Mold uh, sand <laughs> into some shape and form. Hallelujah. Then pour this liquid metal now yes. into the other shape. Uh -huh. to take the form and shape of what we want to, to do to make. That is the foundry. That, that is that that is what is done in a foundry workshop. It involves heat. Uh-huh. It involves hammering. Uh -huh. It involves melting, melting, melting. Uh -huh. uh, and casting. Until you transform a certain shape into another shape. Okay, we transform shapeless things that will be useless yes. into useful uh -huh. shapeless items. Now, that is the ghetto for you. 
So, so when we say get up, I want us to understand what we mean. This is why the you see, you, you people should be careful with this book. It's not because I'm a theologian, but even a literature student who takes time to read this book known as the Bible will be careful with it. Do you know what? Because I want you to look at the life of David when he leaves the gates. Mm. He feigned as what? A madman. Insanity. He feigned insanity. He feigned insanity. And when the king of Akish looked at him, what did he see? He saw so so an insane man. A man shocked him. Because he's out of the gates. Now he's in the ghetto. He's, he's in the process of foundry. Now I would like to talk about the ghetto, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> this is what the ghetto does. It beats you socially. Beats you legally. Beats you economically. Until you lose the former shame and he molds you in the foundry. Yes. <laughs> if if you are smelting uh uh let's say steel yes and it has uh earth yes rusty yes. and impurities on it yes when the metal melts yes. those impurities float on top and you scrape them off and leave the molten metal that is pure down. Uh -huh. now, now, what you call impurities is the original identity. Because that is what the ghetto does to you. It beats you. Presses you. Melts you. Fixes you into a certain pallet. And makes sure you get out of that part looking like it. That is the ghetto for you. But gentlemen and ladies, and so is the gates. And so is the what? And so is the gate. They are there is a lifestyle, a mindset, and a psychology of the gates. But there is a lifestyle, a mindset, and a psychology of the ghettos. There, there is a ghetto psychology. There is a ghetto mindset. There is a lifestyle of the ghetto. And I can assure you, the people in the ghetto still hold parties. Yeah. They, they, they celebrate in the ghetto. <clears throat> there, there is music, there, there is music and dancing in the ghetto. There is music and dancing in the gates. But there is also music and dancing in the ghetto. There are parties and picnics in the, in the gates. But there are also parties and picnics in, in the ghetto. There is celebration in the gate. And to our dismay, there is celebration in the ghetto. Do, do you know why there is celebration in the ghetto? Because it is not them celebrating. Mm. It is the ghetto psychology now. It is the mindset. It is the new caste. And they are celebrating.
the, the ghetto will beat you, deform you, melt you, and then form you. And after it has formed you, you will celebrate. <laughs> you will now celebrate. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The the group that joined David at the cave of Adla, I want you to understand something about them. The Bible is very punctual when it says, and now, <laughs> and everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented joined David. Now, I want you to understand that distress, debt, and discontented, it is not a state for these individuals. No, it is not just a state. It is a lifestyle. It is distress. It, it, the, the Hebrew word of distress is very interesting. It is perpetual bitterness and perpetual stress. Perpetual. Hey, the, someone is born in stressful situations. He 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 learns stressed, hence the cry. The, the, that when it, in the medical world, normalcy is determined by crying. Yes. The doctors do not say that the baby has laughed. Therefore, this one is a normal delivery. Mm. The baby has cried. If you don't cry, they beat you. If you don't cry, <laughs> the delivery is not normal. So I want you to understand why the Bible says all the distressed. Someone is born in distressful situations, under distressed situations, and then the bone cries. Because the baby is stressed in that process of delivery, Actually, if the baby does not cry, uh, yes. they forget about the birth uh -huh. and uh, insist on the baby did, but the baby did not cry. Uh -huh. The baby is not distressed, therefore the baby is not normal. Yeah. So what we have here, all those who are distressed, this is not just a state, this is no mercy. I want you to understand that distress in this text means no more. Who, to whoever distress was no mercy, no more. That kind joined David. Now, the dead, those in debt, not having a debt is abnormal. Is abnormal. And we cannot declare you no more. Such is a lifestyle. Is there no more? Now, the other kind of group that joins David is the discontented. This is not a situation which requires to be satisfied. Mm. It is not a situation that requires satisfaction. That there, there will be a point when the discontent will be contented. Gets and gets. No, this one is who they are. 
What is normal? Being discontented. It is not a state of how much. No, it is a state of what and who. Who are you? We are the discontented, the perpetually discontented. Meanwhile, King Saul in the gaps is hunting David in the ghettos. <clears throat> now, the characters here, the three characters and the characteristics fit 100% King Saul in the gaps. Huh? After King Saul learning that David is anointed for kingship, he is distressed. After King Saul learning that David is somewhere alive, he is discontented. After King Saul learning that David must be dealt with, he has a date to pay. To ensure. To clear. <laughs> there is distress, date, discontent in the gaps. There is distress, debt, discontent in the ghetto. Gaps. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell you today. That both gates and ghettos were designed to keep you in. They are, they are both exclusive and purposely designed keep you in. And when you are in the gaps, you are worried of the members in the ghettos. Hence the distress. Because you know very well that those in the ghettos are about to come and either knock or climb over the gate. That is when you are where? In the gates. But whoever is in the ghetto has only one reason for being in the ghetto. Those in the gates. And the reason is those in the gates. And because ghettos were built to keep you in, are we together? No single member of the ghetto tries to make the ghetto a better place. They all struggle to get out of the ghetto. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yeah. There is no one in the ghetto that tries to live upright in the ghetto. And make the ghetto a better place. They just want to get out of the ghetto because they are against the idea of being kept in. But because those in the gates cannot serve each other, mm. they want to ensure there is a ghetto for a supply of servants. So they maintain the existence of ghettos. They want ghettos in place. Ladies and gentlemen, ghettos are a creation. 
mesa de guerra. So, 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 so those in the guests ensure the existence of a supply of servants from the ghetto. Yes. Which servants those in the gates don't yes. trust. Yes. They serve under surveillance and then they lead them out of the gates. Back to the ghettos. They will come back the next day to serve. Have you ever been to South Africa and seen an exodus in the morning and an exodus in the evening? from the quarters of the whites and that exodus is by the blacks blacks wake up in the morning in south africa and go to work on the farms and homes of the whites in south africa and then there is an exodus in the evening when the blacks are going back to the ghettos from the gates that is a reality in this world and i can assure you those in the ghettos have one person to blame for them being in the ghetto. It is those in the gaps. Even when they fill their trenches with dirt, it is not those in the ghetto to blame. <laughs> it is those in the gaps to blame for these filled trenches. Now, those in the gates put surveillance, barbed wires, fortresses, security guards, tough dogs, not to protect them from lions. But they protect themselves from those in the ghettos. That is life in this world. I would like to ask you, where are you? Are you in the gates? I'm sure if you're in the gates, you are distressed, you are in debt, and you are discontented by the existence of the ghetto. Where are you? Are you in the ghettos? I'm sure if you're there, you are distressed, Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Oh. So Hallelujah. <laughs> now, because the ghetto and the gates are sys systemic and the two are a separate object, this is why both those in the gates and those in the ghetto have one cross with one hanging God on that cross. Who wants to save us from our perpetual distress and our perpetual debt? and have a picture of this content to me. Amen. Both those in the gate need salvation, not from the ghettos. Those in the ghettos need salvation, not from the ghettos. We all need God to save us. Because this is what I've discovered. If both in the gates and the ghettos is distress, discontent, and dead, is it? Then the problem is not, and the issue is not where you are. Are we good? That, that's not the issue. The issue is your psychology, how you see things. 
character and how you look at things. Can you deal with discontent and distress and debt wherever you are? Do you have the ability to deal with that wherever you are? Whether you are in the gaps or in the ghettos. Can you deal with that? Do you have the power? Or at least do you know someone who can help you? Because I know someone who can. And that someone is God. Only God can reform you so the ghetto deformed you. And the gate deformed you. Isn't it? Uh-huh. Only God can reform you. And he, because these guys join, these guys could not join David when, when he was in the palace. Did you watch that? They could only join him when he was in the cave. Did they have a place in the palace? You see? So, so there are people who cannot join you in the gates. Oh, oh okay. You guys did get me. You, there are people who are going to help you achieve your goal and dream. The only problem is that you are in the gates. It was until David got into the cave that his journey of becoming the king started. When he was in the palace, his, his dream, his mission, and his purpose was dying in the palace. So I'm here to tell you that there are many people whose dreams are dying within the gates. Not until they become fugitives and run away and out of those gates, they are not going to become who God called them to be. But do you see the team that is built around a dream of becoming a king? A group of deformed people. So, who is your team? You scroll your phone book, look into your family, and tell me the team behind your dream of becoming a king. Gentlemen and ladies, sin gets us. And after it has gated us, it gets us. <laughs> and we start celebrating in a getaway. And then we start becoming Rastafarians. Dagala to get a gejuba. Kuzada. Ya, ya man. Ya man. Then we start smoking everything. Then we start dressing anyway. Then we start eating anyhow. Then, then we started laughing about what is wrong. Our understanding and definition of what is wrong and what is right is lost. Because sin has gated us. Now it has gated us. We have been deformed. That is why we enjoy what God forbids. Because we are gated and gated. <laughs> we are so deformed that what gives us happiness is evil. It's a get mentality and a ghetto psychology. Did, did, have you seen what your news reports? Mm. Let, me, let me just give you a very, a very, a very quick example. In journalism, there is this tale. I don't know whether it is from journalism or what. Okay? It does not make news for a dog to bite a human being. Mm -hmm. What makes news is a human being biting a dog. What you call newsworthiness is must be gets and get on this. That is why.
And we all should be crying, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from these gaps and ghettos? Who else? Apart from God himself. May God bless you. Amen.